Now, in this section, we shall learn about examples of non-uniform circular motion. We have learned the basics of circular motion, non-uniform, and the accelerations involved into that. We shall qualify our understanding with the help of Newton's second law that says F is equal to MA. So, let's start here. See, when the motion is non-uniform circular motion, we have learned that the linear speed of the particle as it moves in the circular path, that is not a constant, that's constantly varying. And it follows that the angular velocity of motion, and that also is a variable, that also varies. So while we have got the speed changing continually, it means that velocity vector, that's along the tangent, is changing in magnitude and direction both. And this accounts for two accelerations of the particle. Suppose the particle is this one, and we have got one acceleration that is AR, centripetal acceleration, and this one is directed towards the center of the circle. So let me show it here. These are all revisions of what we have done earlier. See, this green arrow at the bottom, as you can see, this is the AR, centripetal acceleration, directed towards the center of the circle C. And the magnitude of AR is given by V squared by R, where V is the instantaneous speed of the particle at that instant, and R is of course the radius of the circle. So we just can show here, this is the radius of the circle, and AR is the centripetal acceleration. This acceleration comes in the picture because velocity vector is changing direction. Directional change is accounted for by this AR. And let me call this my equation number one. And similarly, since linear speed is changing, one more acceleration comes in the picture, and that we call tangential acceleration along the tangent, as the name suggests. This is my AT along the tangent. This AT will be parallel to the velocity vector if V is increasing in magnitude, and if V, the speed, is decreasing, then AT will be anti-parallel, pointing opposite direction. Now, this AT, once again, is caused by the rate of change of speed with time, so it's dV dt, is magnitude, and that is my equation number two. So while the particle possesses two accelerations simultaneously, one is AR, centripetal acceleration, and one is AT, tangential acceleration, their resultant is given by the vector summation method, parallelogram law, that gives us total acceleration to be A, and this makes an angle of phi with the tangential direction. We also know that this A is given by, magnitude-wise, square root of AR square plus AT square. This is my formula number three, and if the A vector, total acceleration vector, makes an angle of phi with the tangent, then tan phi, as you can see easily, is coming out to be magnitude of AR by magnitude of AT, and that is my equation number four. So equation number one to four describe both accelerations, two accelerations, possessed by the particle in non-uniform circular motion. We have found them, added them, and find the resultant and also define the angle made by A with the tangential direction. At this point, let us recall this Newton's second law of motion, which tells that F is equal to MA. In vector form, it says the force acting on the particle is given by the product of mass and acceleration, both being in the same direction. So if we could apply the scalar form, I could write down, since F and A are in the same direction, also write F is equal to MA, now that is Newton's second law. Mathematical form, of course, of Newton's second law. Now let us apply this formula, this law, in the circular motion now. We can see that since F accounts for the acceleration A, similarly here I can argue, this AR, centripetal acceleration, must be caused by a centripetal force. That is, we could write down that FR, the centripetal force, is given by mass into centripetal acceleration. This is in vector form. 
And if you go from here to scalar format, I could write down the centripetal force magnitude is equal to mass into V square by R because that is the value of AR and that I shall call my equation number 5 say. So we see here centripetal acceleration AR is caused by FR, centripetal force, both being directed radially inwards towards center of the circle. So here I am constructing one more figure for comparison and that I just position along with the green diagram so that you can compare that. So FR, my force was this one that is just like AR is acting towards center of the circle radially inward. This is my FR. Similarly, I could go forwards and can write down that FT, a tangential force must be here in play and that must be accounting for the mass into tangential acceleration AT. It's all the result of Newton's second law. So in scalar format, I could write down that FT is equal to M into AT and that is coming out to be M into dv dt that is the rate of change of linear speed with time. Now that is my equation number 6. So we have got two results here. Let's see that once again. I shall first highlight it and say a few words on that. The results we have put inside the box and numbered them as 5 and 6 equations. See they are telling us that there is a radial force, centripetal force called FR causing the AR, centripetal acceleration given by equation number 5 and there is another force FT, tangential force that is causing the tangential acceleration given by FT is equal to M into AT. And just like AR and AT are both present in circular motion with variable speed, it means FR and FT both are present together to cause the motion of the particle in circle with variable speed. So in my figure, I could have shown that this is my FT, that is the tangential force, you can see it, it's parallel, FT and AT are parallel because they are multiplying just AR with M, M is a scalar quantity. So when you multiply a vector by a scalar, it does not change direction. Hence, directions of FR and AR have to be the same. They are both radially inward towards center of the circle. Similarly, FT you find by multiplying M with AT and M being a scalar once again, AT and FT are both tangential, they are parallel to each other. So AT is along tangent, same thing with FT. And when you add them up vectorially, as we have shown here, just by similar method, we get the resultant and you call this resultant as F. This is what I'm calling F. And this F also makes an angle of phi, exactly the same angle with the tangential direction. So just look at this figure and see that since force given by mass into acceleration, mass being a scalar quantity, you can argue that FR and AR are parallel, AT and FT are parallel, A and F are parallel, and both A and F make the same angle phi with the tangent given by equation number 4. I should just juxtapose this figure, this red vector diagram into the circle and compare it for better clarity and comparison. So I look at the two figures now on the left hand side. The upper one is the diagram showing the vector addition of the accelerations AR, AT, the resultant A and the angle phi. This is the effect, acceleration and the cause is the forces FR accounting for AR FT accounting for AT given by these equations 5 and 6 thanks to Newton's second law and then the resultant F accounting for A and F and A being parallel then at the same angle phi with the tangent. This will give us the right relevance to understand examples, more cases of non-uniform circular motion. Hello students, you got a glimpse of our video lessons through this small lecture. We have hundreds of lectures like this one covering various topics of advanced school level and intermediate physics in our website. They are exhaustive and often 
accompanied by elaborate diagrams to make concepts even clearer. They are taught with passion and sometimes with a bit of fun. So at the end of the lesson you have a commanding grip on the subject and you are ready for the board and competitive exams. Subscribe at physicsacademyonline.com to access video lectures of highest standard on various topics of physics.